Hello, this is Scott from Optics Realm. It's December 2012. This is uh, Optics Tutorial 8. We're going to talk about cardinal points and give you an idea for what the just the basics of what cardinal points are. So, why have cardinal points? Uh, let me present a problem here with a thin lens, with a th well, a thick lens. With a thin lens, it's infinitesimally small. You know where to reference your measuring your image and object distance relationships. But when you have a thick lens, if you're going to calculate focal length or object distance, where do you reference? Do you reference from the vertex, from the center of the lens? You know, what, what do you do? And cardinal points is a theoretical construct that optical engineers use to discuss a thick lens. There's three types of cardinal points, focal points, principal points and nodal points. And really there's a fourth, there are anti-principal points, pr principal planes, but I never use those. I'm only including those for thoroughness. Each of these are a pair. So for instance, there's a front and back focal point, a front and back nodal point. And you can use planes interchangeably with points. Let's step back and I want to discuss where, where this is valid. It's valid in the praxial region and I want to show you exactly what where that praxial region is. So let's start with a spherical surface description. You know, generally a spheroid is r squared equals x plus y x squared plus y squared plus z squared or rather, you know, we can combine uh, x squared plus y squared as an uh, aperture squared and you really need to include an offset for the radius. This is a general shape. And if you have a ray, a ray actually will intercept because these are squares, you're going to intercept the front and the back. And we really only care about the front. So optical engineers redefine a spherical surface in terms of a sag. What is a sag? Well this red curve here is your sphere and we we put a plane that is tangent to the vertex and the sag of a sphere is the distance this, the sphere is from this plane versus aperture. So your sag is a function of aperture and the radius of curvature and it's this equation here. So we take this equation and you can apply a power series expansion and there's, you know, this is an infinite series to approximate this this function. If we take this first term here, your sag is rho squared on, on 2r. And this is valid when you have a small rho divided by, by r. So aperture divided by radius, or if your radius is much, much larger than your aperture. This is referred to as first order optics. This is the first order in the expansion, and we're using simple algebraic equations to understand optics. And another way to say this is uh, you use the small angle approximation, sine theta equals theta, theta for all your Snell, Snell's Law ca uh, calculations. Cardinal points apply to this region, and we call it the paraxial region, very close to the optical axes, and medical practitioners like to use the term paraxial, meaning close to the axis, close to the body. So here's a lens, this blue lens. Here's your optical axis, axis of rotation, and this green area here is the paraxial region, where uh, rho on R is very small. You go outside that, up here and up here, it's a, you should be tracing real rays to get a high fidelity model. Let's start in on principal planes. To do that, we're going to get the back principal plane first by tracing a single marginal ray from infinity, you know, coming from the left, intercepting the lens, it's going to refract and refract and come to a focus. Now your input ray, if we project it forward, we can project it forward, and your output ray projecting back, they're going to intersect at some location. But you find that intersection, and that essentially is where on the optical axis that is your principal point. And the plane that intersects this point and the optical axis, axis of rotation, that is your principal plane. So here's your back principal plane, call it P prime, prime meaning the back, and here's your back focal point, F prime. Likewise, you could do the front principal plane by backwards ray tracing this marginal ray coming from the right to the left. You get your front focal point and your front principal plane. So just in review, these come in pairs. You've got a pair 
of principal points and a pair of focal points. Uh, unprimed for the front, primed for the back. Now, these principal planes, you can replace the lens. I've grayed out this, uh, I've shaded this blue thick lens here, and you just consider the principal plane. So you have a ray that comes in, incoming marginal ray, hits the front principal plane, and then at the back principal plane, it refracts and comes to a focus. So you can remove these planes, uh, I'm sorry, you can remove the lens and just consider the planes. Going from the front plane to the back plane, you have unity magnification. If it's a height of one here, it's a height of one on the back as well. Now, when you're doing your optical image object relationships, your object distance, here's your object, it's actually the distance of the, of the object for the calculations goes to the principal plane, not to the vertex. And so, for instance, let's take this, this marginal ray. Marginal ray starts at the object, goes to the edge of the aperture stop. We'll just assume the lens is the aperture stop. It is going to go to the edge of the principal plane here. And then the region between principal planes, referred to as hiatus, or what happens is the ray takes a hiatus, doesn't travel between these two, comes to this point here, and then you can calculate your image distance, and it that'll tell you where your your image is. And again, you can use the lens maker's equation or the nomographs of past videos to find out the relationship between image and object and focal length. How do you locate these principal plane planes? Here's the equations. So the front principal plane from the vertex of the lens, and we have to pay attention to sign convention, is a function of the focal length of the lens, f, and this has to be the thick the, the equation for the focal length based on the thick lens divided by the back radius of curvature times index minus one divided by index. And there is a negative sign here. Likewise, the back principal plane is given in this equation is here. here. Um, now the distance from the vertex to the principal plane is a function of the back radius of curvature and the focal length. So here we've put the we've shown how lens bending with a positive lens, the top row, and a negative lens for the bottom row, how these principal planes shift around with lens bending. And again, these are the Coddington equations. Coddington? Coddington, I think I'd have to refer back to prior videos. But you can see for a biconvex lens, the principal planes are symmetric. For a plano convex lens, the back principal plane is right on the vertex, whereas the, the front principal plane shifts in. That's because the Principal plane distance from the vertex is a function of the other radius of curvature, the other side's radius of curvature. And here is the anti-principal plane. The anti-principal plane has negative magnification, negative unity magnification. So if you have a ray height here of h, the back principal plane occurs where you have negative h. Again, I don't use this very much. Uh, and if any of the optical practitioners out there have ever used this for anything? I'd love to hear about it. Let's talk about nodal points. In a nodal point, nodal points are referenced relative to the principal planes. And in this case, we have the front index is not air. Well, we'll say it's a generic index N. And the back index is N prime. So if you have a ray, this would be your chief ray that goes through goes into this nodal point, it's going to come out the other nodal point with unity angular magnification. Set another way, so I'm jumping ahead here, set another way, you can rotate the ray and it's not going to deviate, the, the, input angle, the output angle is going to equal the input angle for all cases here, or we could rotate this lens to our heart's content and this ray will, will remain undeviated. How do you calculate what the, where the nodal point nodal plane locations are, and they're referenced relative to the principal plane. So the change in the change in nodal point location from the principal plane is simply a function of the difference in the two index of refraction, image side versus object side, times the focal length. If this lens is submerged in air or water or it's uniform, whatever, it's a uniform homogeneous index, your nodal points fall on the principal planes. 
in review. Focal points, you have a, a zero magnification. The height, the, the marginal ray height is zero. Principal points, you've got a magnification of one. Anti-principal points, you've got a linear magnification of negative one. And nodal points, an ang angular magnification of one. Now, I've touched on this before. I did a sneak peek. Uh, I think it was the last optics video, optics seven, where I, I showed you where this back principal plane is. I showed you this principle of tracing the front marginal ray and locating the back marginal ray and where they intersect, that's your focal length. Well, I've shown you this is the back principal plane. So not only do principal, plane, ap principal planes apply to thick lenses, they apply to optical systems. This lens has its set of principal planes. This lens has its set of principal planes. And when you put them in combination, the system is going to have a set of principal planes. Very important concept, principal planes and nodal points. That's why I'm making a whole video over it. Here's homework eight. It's a single lens that I've got a series of questions on. I'll post the detailed questions to my website if you have any interest. You can uh, please Continue to subscribe in the Optics Realm channel, YouTube channel. I'm getting a lot of feedback, a lot of subscribers, a lot of hits. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm excited to see so many people interested in optics. My website, opticsrealm.com, my email address. I've X'd out my Twitter. I'm not really using it. Please stop by and say hello. Oh, and I'll, I'll hopefully follow this up with a ZMAX uh, description on how to model this within ZMAX. Thank you, and have a great day.